Hello, welcome back to AE 3530, System Dynamics and Vibrations. In this video, we are going to go over rotational motion and Newton's second law for rotational systems. And we're going to go also do example three. <clears throat> okay, so for rotational motion, Newton's second law is expressed as the sum of the moments about a particular point, usually the origin or some other particular point that you want to compute it, you get to decide is equal to the angular momentum about that uh, position O, where MO is the moment about O and it's defined as MO being equal to the position vector from O to the force crossed with the force. That is how we compute our moments. And HO is the angular momentum with respect to O and it is typically defined as H O being equal to R cross M times R dot. So that is the cross product of the position of the body with the linear momentum of it. And thus we can find that H dot, H sub O dot, will be equal to R dot crossed with M R dot plus R crossed with m r double dot and a vector crossed with itself is zero such that we find that h dot is equal to r cross m r double dot and then h o dot will right here is equal to r crossed with m r double dot Okay, with that in mind, we're now going to go and work on the third example, which focuses on a simple pendulum. So we're going to consider a simple pendulum. We're assuming in-plane oscillations, a massless string, and no friction or dissipation, as also that string is inextensible. We're asked to determine the equation of motion using the angular form of Newton's second law. Okay, just like before, we're going to start with defining a coordinate system. First, we're going to go with choosing an origin. We're going to put the origin at the point where the string connects to the ground. And in this case, we're going to use, rather than use a Cartesian, let's use, we're going to use polar coordinates or radial and transverse uh, coordinates. We'll put an E hat R down the length of the wire pointing towards the pendulum. And then normal to that, we're going to have E hat theta. And then we need positive direction of positive rotation, and we're just going to use counterclockwise like standard. So we're right here that we're using polar with the origin at the connection point between the ground and the spring. Okay, we now want to go and compute our position vectors. So we're going to go from the origin to the center of the pendulum. It's a little bit offset, but that's fine. We're going to say this is just R here. There's no need to give it a subscript. And the position vector R is going to be equal to L in the E hat R direction. R equal to L E hat R. We now want to go and compute the velocity and acceleration vectors. So R dot is going to be equal to L dot times E hat R plus L. And now we need to compute the derivative of E hat R. In this case, it's going to be theta dot E hat theta. And since the string is inextensible, L dot is 0, such that R dot is equal to L theta dot e hat theta. Now we're going to compute the acceleration. R double dot is going to be equal to, in the, we're going to start with the e hat theta direction, and we'll have to do product rules, so we'll get L dot theta dot plus L theta double dot, all of that in the e hat theta direction, minus L theta dot squared 
in the e hat r direction. And this comes from taking the derivative of e hat theta. And we said that l dot is zero, so we can eliminate that. And then we get then that r double dot is equal to minus l theta dot squared e hat r plus l theta double dot e hat theta. Okay, that's the end of the kinematics. We now have our acceleration vector and we know our position vector. We're now going to go and do a free body diagram for this system. So we'll, we'll draw the pendulum mass. We have gravity, mg, pulling down. And we have the tension pointing along the length of the wire. That is our tension force. In this coordinate system, we need to decompose the gravitational force. So we'll draw a vector here and then one here. This angle right there is theta, which means that here we'll have mg cosine theta, and this one will be mg sine theta. OK, we're now going to apply the rotational form of Newton's second law. This is that the sum of the moment about the point that we're interested in could will be the origin in this case is going to be equal to the angular momentum dotted in that direction, which will be equal to r crossed with m r double dot. Let's work on computing the h zero dot h o dot. This is equal to well, L in the e hat r direction crossed with m times minus L theta dot squared e hat r plus L theta double dot e hat theta. We're going to use uh, what I call the clock technique for computing cross products. What you do is you start by writing the vectors in a basically a clock e hat r e hat theta and we'll use e hat k for our third direction connect them like this and this is where e hat r crossed with e hat theta gives you positive e hat k e hat k crossed with e hat r gives you positive e hat theta if you go the other way e hat theta crossed with e hat r will give you minus e hat k you can also do this with the standard Cartesian. So if you write I, J, and K, you can connect these. And so I cross J is positive K. J cross I is minus K. OK, so first cross product, we have E hat R crossed with E hat R, or terms in that direction. That is 0, which then gives us L E hat R crossed with E hat theta. Looking at our clock, we have E hat R crossed with e hat theta gives us positive e hat k, or in fact, rather than k, let's use e hat z here, not to con prevent confusion with that k direction. So then h o dot is equal to m l squared theta double dot. Okay. Let's now deal with the moments. So the sum of the moments, in this case we're doing it about the origin, is going to be equal to the sum of the cross product between the positions crossed with the forces, which will then be equal to L e hat r, because that is the position of all of the forces, crossed with the quantity mg cosine theta. And in fact, let me go back and look at my, my free body diagram and explain this. So first of all, uh, e hat r points from the origin to the pendulum, which means that the tension is in the negative direction. And the mg cosine is in the positive e hat r direction. So this is mg cosine minus t in the e hat r plus looking at mg sine, that's actually going to be in the negative e hat theta direction. So we'll erase the plus and make it a minus. 
So I'll have here minus mg sine theta e hat theta. And then again, we'll use our clock to do this. First of all, e hat r cross e hat r is zero. That equation would somehow allow you to find the tension if we cared to. So then e hat r cross with e hat theta is positive e hat z. And I left that out here on the angular momentum h dot o. We need to add the unit vector e hat z there. That is, you know, now in a cylindrical coordinate system. So then what we'll find for the moment is that this is going to be equal to minus mgl sine theta. Let me rewrite this. So the sum of the moments, mo, is equal to minus mgl sine theta in the e hat z direction. From here, we're going to write out the full vector equation for Newton's second law, which would be minus mgl sine theta e hat z equal to m l squared theta double dot e hat z, from which we'll get that m l squared theta double dot plus m g l sine theta is equal to zero. And then placing that into a standard form for a pendulum, we can eliminate the mass, eliminate one of the l's, and then dividing by l, we'll get theta double dot plus g divided by l times the sine of theta is equal to zero. And this is the standard equation for a pendulum. Okay, in the next video, we're gonna go through network energy and power.